Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Claudio Murgan, the host of the Spiritual Inspire show. And my uh, guest today is Angelica Gana. Angelica was a rising star in her native Romania when she made a life-changing decision to move to Canada. Persistence and self-discipline were her closest companions over the next two and a half decades as she embarked on a journey of healing her heart and rediscovering her passion for music and writing. She went on to study fitness at Seneca College in Toronto and became a fitness assessor and personal trainer while continuing her vocal training at the Royal Conservatoire of Music. Today, Angelica is the recipient of the Award of Excellence from CanPAC Chamber of Commerce Canada for breaking cultural barriers through singing. She is the writer and producer of three music CDs, Remember Who You Are, Sacred, and Christmas, and the author of three books, Remember Who You Are, The Story Behind the Song, Habits Rule You, and Love is Light, Transmute Fear into Love. Angelica, thank you for joining me today and you are the first Romanian I'm interviewing on this show and I hope your story will positively motivate some of our co-nationals. I, I always got dreams and, and messages and things like that but I never actually thought of it that way. This is the first time someone actually puts it in words that way, certain abilities. I just feel like that's, oh wow, it's, I don't have abilities for that. It's just, it just happens and it just comes to me kind of uh, without my knowledge without me doing anything but I never really took them seriously until I would say this year really because this year I started getting a lot of messages and um, looking back it's it's very clear to me that my whole life I've been on this path and many times you know how it is we try to sway away and do other things and I wanted to do this and that but this constant thread constant thing that's God, <laughs> if you call it that way, always pulled me toward this, this path. And um, when I look back, it's like, no matter how hard you try to sway, you can't. It's just, you, we just can't, because I feel like we're, we're completely connected to God, and there is no way that we can ever be lost or, or lost or anything. It's, we're just always connected to God, and this is how it's always going to be. So we're always, we're, we all will end up well. That's, that's what it is at the end that I think. Um, and it depends on us to, to open up to that uh, source, to the divinity, to God, in order to, to feel it and make it better for ourselves, correct? Yes, yeah, definitely. And it's, it's, um, it's a journey. Um, I used to not like this word journey and I always was the kind, like I never had patience in the past, even now I'm fighting with it a little bit, but oh, I don't like this word journey. I just want to get there. What's the, this journey? You know, when we hear uh, enjoy the journey, I'm like, screw the journey. I don't want no journey. I just want to get there. You know, I want the results. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, you can't do it without a journey because it's the journey where you learn, where we learn. And I feel like it's never complete, really. So it is a journey whether we want it or not. Yeah. Yeah. So how other people say, stop and smell the flowers. Enjoy yes. everything around you and you'll reach your, your goal sooner rather than later. Yeah, we reach our goals when we are supposed to reach our goals. I... I I'm going to be 50 next month and I finally get it after all these years. We reach our goals when we are meant to reach our goals. And it's, I would be so bold to say that I believe that we actually plan it with God even before we come here. We just forget. And because it's, it's very, to me, especially when I look back at my life so far, there was nothing that, I planned in particular and achieved and that was it. And then I had an amazing satisfaction from that. It was always something that I didn't plan that came to me, that God sent me, that I achieved and gave me the satisfaction. It was never something that just came from me. You know, something that I, I am an avid planner. Every year I get my planner and I write down in all details and no, that, didn't really pan out ever the way I planned it. <laughs> um, other than, you know, maybe little things like, you know, I want to learn how to play piano or I want to, things like that. Yeah, you can plan and you achieve. It is good to, it's 
good to create habits and uh, achieve the uh, the outcome that you want but when it comes to spirituality you know i feel like i don't know if i should even say this but this is what i feel that it's not even up to us when we open up fully it's with me it just it came in the most unexpected times for me and sometimes when I was at my lowest emotionally. So I think we should just step back and just let God do its thing and that's it. And <laughs> everything will be okay. Yes, but I still think we have to be open, open Definitely. our heart, open our mind. Mm -hmm. um, because again, as others say, um, God won't knock at your door. You have to knock at his door. Mm -hmm. um, and see if he'll open up for you and what the message is behind that door. You will take it and you will implement it. And uh, I can, again, vouch for the fact that you have to um, step back sometimes and not force it. And I got yeah. that message very clear uh, uh, recently mm -hmm. that you have to ease a little bit, don't put pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. Things will unfold. Uh, when you are ready in the, the universe and then God wants to give you that. So mm -hmm. just uh, relax for now. And yes, I, yes, I think the me yeah. that's the most important thing, to relax, step back and let God uh, lead the way. Um, I love A Course in Miracles. It's, it's a very important book for me. And one of the lessons there is I step back and let God lead the way. And that's all there is. And we have to stay, step back in faith. We have to step back in, in knowing that everything will be okay. And, um, you know, to me, life is very simple. We just have to have peace in our hearts. Just don't do harm to anybody. Uh, stick with your passion and be patient. I think that's in a few words, how yes, we, I would like me to be <laughs> full yes. time. Yeah, we complicate life because we want to achieve mm -hmm. more and more. We want to, especially in the material side, uh, we want a better job because we want a bigger house and a nicer car and we want uh, longer vacations or more often vacations. So that comes with, uh, with a price and yeah. that's uh, more work, more stress on our bodies and on our mind. Uh, and we forget about uh, the spiritual component which this show is trying to enhance mm -hmm. uh, and bring um, forward so people understand that it has to have a balance. They have to have balance in their life. Yeah, definitely. Balance is very, very important. I mean, we still are living on this planet. We still have to pay our bills and everything, but we just have to take it easy and take a step back. And, you know, I, I really believe that also doing something that we love, even if, even if, you know, you have a job that you don't like, but at least you do something you're passionate about part-time or on the side and, you know, uh, slowly, slowly that will take over and become hopefully a full-time job. But I think it's very important to, to discover and find out what we're passionate about because that helps us to be creative and being creative is what opens up um, helps us move more toward the right brain, which is the creative brain, God, and um, we are creative beings. That's, that's our biggest asset, I feel, and we have to find things to do that, that gets our juices flowing and we become creative, and not to be afraid of new things. Uh, always learning something new is good for the brain is, uh, you know, it creates new neural pathways, new habits, new, um, you know, it makes the brain literally younger. It's, it's scientifically proven now that the brain can actually regenerate and an 80 year old can, can um, learn things and uh, make his or her brain literally younger, physically younger. Like, like a 20 year old's brain, for example, it's proven already scientifically. Yes. So, <clears throat> and, and talking about creative juices and uh, energy outside of your regular job, I, I know that um, my passion for you know art and helping artists and writing and business in general um, gave me so much energy, I was able to sustain the, the boredness of a nine to five job. Yeah. I was so excited, so energetic. 
because I knew that at the end of uh, the day, after 5 p.m., I'll go back to do what I really enjoyed. Uh, and that gave me a lot of energy. So for everyone out there, as Angelica said, find your passion and pursue it with, uh, with passion and, and desire because this is where your energy will come from. Yes, our passion is, uh, I would say, the, the straighter path to God as well. Because it's, see, when you do something that you really love and you're creative, again, it, it opens up the door toward your right brain, which is, which is where basically our connection with God is. Left brain is more the logic, numbers, business which is okay too, but it's better to be more in the right brain. And that's what it does. And you can actually be in a meditative state doing what you love. Uh, you don't have to necessarily, although it's good to sit down and meditate, obviously, but you, it's, it's actually a bonus when you do something you love and you're passionate about, you're in a constant meditative state if you focus on it only. And uh, there are doors that open up that... Be, we can't even imagine the doors that open up once we do the things that we love and when we're creative. Yes. We discover a huge different other side of us that, that uh, we didn't even know we had. Yes, and when we are creative, uh, we in a way serve others through our creation, through our, mm -hmm. uh, with what we offer. We serve them and in, in a way, God serves them through us and acts. Yes. Uh, through us. So that's why it's mm -hmm. important to, to find that um, nugget of knowledge and hope that can give us that energy mm -hmm. and, um, and passion. Yeah. And it's um, um, a few weeks ago, I had a message because we were talking before that we that I'm getting messages and it was mostly in the form of dreams over the past, I don't know, maybe 18, 20 years, but the past year it's been also in forms of just thoughts, but coming to me while I'm awake. And one of them was, um, I got this, this humongous, gigantic piece of information that said, um, your attention is God. And the reason I'm talking about that, it will have something to do with what we just talked about, our passion, because it's where we put our attention, that we create, that creates our reality, right? Yes. So this, this message that I got was, your attention is God. Where are you putting your attention? And um, then I got all this explanation how our attention is actually God. How did God create the world? By putting his attention on it. And what would have happened if God, instead of putting his attention on creating something like the world, on something negative? Obviously, it would have been a disaster, right? So because we are extensions of God, we are, we are at literally extensions of God, just like the rays of the suns are extensions of the sun. It's, we are like that, connected to God, a piece of God embodied here on this earth because of that we also carry all the qualities that god has we just are not aware of it that much so but whatever we put our attention that just because we don't believe it that we're powerful it doesn't mean that we're not powerful creators we just create by default so whatever we put our attention is god putting his attention and you bring closer to you it's like um, having a power, a, a pair of powerful binoculars. You put them on and whatever is really far that you can't even see comes close to you and looks bigger. That's exactly how our attention is. It's like the most powerful pair of binoculars. They're built in and whatever we look, this is, this is what I got in the message. It's like you're bringing to you, you're bringing to you, you're bringing to you. So what happens when we are not aware of that and we our attention is scattered everywhere and we bring everything close. It's just a mishmash and a jambalaya of things that many of them are stuff, stuff that we don't even want, especially when we watch TV <laughs> and some shows. So this is, it was the message, be very, very greedy with your attention because your attention is such a powerful creator. Wherever you put it, you bring to you. So, Imagine if we were to put our attention on something we really enjoy, we're passionate about. We put our attention on, on, on something we love doing. 
that becomes exponentially bigger and, and it, it, it turns into our reality little by little. And now with the 5D coming, the fifth dimension where, where things are going to be so much lighter and we are going to be lighter and crystalline, um, this process is going to happen at a much, much higher speed. That's another message that I got with the 5D. How are things going to pan out there? Um, or maybe here where it's almost here. Um, it's things are going to be happening much, much faster. So whatever we put our attention, it's like almost like instant karma, you know? However, whatever you put out, you get back much, much faster because it's not, not a dense reality anymore. It's very light. Things happen really, really fast. So we can actually create beauty in our life by putting our attention on beautiful things. And we can create it really fast. We can, we can make things happen much faster. Um, yes. So because God is within us, we are co-creators. And yes. if we have limited beliefs, we won't be able to, to create whatever we're, ki- we're capable of. Mm-hmm. So that's why, as you mentioned in, in your book also, uh, Habits That Rule You and other authors in, in their own books, um, we really have to uh, dissolve these limited beliefs about ourselves and our brain capacity and our heart capacity um, and what we are you know, capable of. And, and that will increase our um, life beauty and uh, life enrichment, if I can say yes. like that. Yeah, yes. So this is, uh, this is a very, very interesting times. Uh, these are very, very powerful times that we're going through right now. And I'm sure a lot of people feel it already. It's, um, it's, it's going to be great. And all we have to do is just stick a step back, have patience, have love in our hearts, no fear. Fear is the worst enemy because uh, there is nothing to fear. Um, and uh, just, just start focusing on some things that we love, that's all. And don't waste time with people who are negative and don't understand you. That's, that's uh, depleting. And mm. yeah. You're also blessed with uh, a wonderful uh, husband and, and daughter and uh, he understands you so well and he's also uh, energy sensitive and uh, how it is to, to have such a person in, in your family and be on the same um, vibration wave and resonance and please tell us a little bit about Well, I'll, I'll tell, yes, I will tell you, it's amazing, especially because before this I had a marriage and I don't like to talk about that, but just... I appreciate it even more so because I had a seven year marriage that was the complete opposite. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Just like, you know, with your beautiful wife, she's amazing as well. It's, it's great to be with someone who understands you and it's on, he's on the same page. Um, but to give you like a little bit of a better description of him, um, my sister lives in Cyprus and when she first visited, uh, after she visited, she went back to Cyprus and her friends were asking because that was the first time she met my husband. And uh, they were like, okay, so, okay, your sister, I know how she is, but how is your brother-in-law? Is he okay? Is he nice? And she gave the best description of him ever. She said, you know how my brother-in-law is? If, you, if he walks on the street and you walk behind him and you hit him over the head with a bat, he turns he puts his arm around your neck and, or your, your shoulders and says, tell me what's bothering you. <laughs> That's how he is. <laughs> That's the best description of him that ever, ever, anybody had. Yeah. yeah, a loving person indeed. And mm-hmm. in fact, this is how we all should act with those who um, want to hurt us or want to do something harmful to us, but we have to understand where they're coming from. What's the root cause of, of that mm-hmm. feeling? Could be us or could be them um, having that feeling from a different uh, um, lifetime or a different um, cause in the family or out, outside source. So yes, it's a very interesting uh, description, a nice description. description yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I even joke with him. Not that I believe it, but I joke with him. I say, if, if Jesus was to ever reincarnate, I think it's him. <laughs> I don't believe he is. I'm just saying it's a joke. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, this is 
I mean, it's good for two people to be on the same page, obviously, it's the best. But if they're not, they can still support and respect each other for each other's passions and their level of understanding as long see this is the thing this is the problem with the world the most people in the world they don't accept the others for who they are and what they believe in and it's the same in a marriage it's you don't have to have the same uh, passions you don't have to have the same uh, love the same doing the same things as long as there is mutual respect and I let him or her do this, whatever they, they feel that is good for them, I'm not going to laugh at that. I'm not going to make fun of that and put them down like a lot of couple I, couples I hear that they go through, especially nowadays with all the information that's coming out. Uh, I see a lot of people on Facebook saying, help, my husband will this and that. He won't you know, understand that he, you know, he puts me down and doesn't, make me, doesn't understand things. So as long as we have respect for each other, like why can't we just appreciate each other? As long as we don't hurt anybody and the person doesn't hurt anybody, let them be. <laughs> yes. Mm, right? So but why do you have mm. to have, why do you have this need to make the other people think you are right? You know, admit, accept that you are right, that what you do is correct and, and everything. Yeah, I have a feeling... In, is I have a feeling nobody even knows yeah. the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, in, your, in your book, you mentioned that um, you had some, um, you struggled with food addictions. Um, how did you overcome it? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to say willpower because to me, that's a wrong concept. It's will. Will is one. It comes from God. There's just one will and we all tapped into it, tap into that. People who think, and I used to believe this too, that my will was weak and when I was suffering with um, a lot of things actually, not just food addiction, I was, I was eating a lot and my luck was that I was working out a lot. I danced my entire life and uh, you couldn't really see it. But when I, when I stopped doing that professionally and that's when I realized I was eating a lot. And um, um, especially I was addicted to carbs and sugar. Like I would eat, I could eat a cake if I wanted to. And sometimes I did. I, one time I actually went to Tim Hortons and I got a bagel with butter. And then by the time I got out of the drive-thru, I finished it. I went back again. I did that six times in a row one time. I ate six bagels with butter from Tim Hortons. Wow. <laughs> that, yeah, like this was actually 20 something years ago and after I divorced, I wasn't eating because I was sad. I was eating because I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was eating because I felt free and out of prison. And uh, yeah, and I didn't realize that I was actually getting really addicted to sugar and carbs. And uh, how I got rid of it is uh, two very important things. First, um, learning of who I am and where I'm coming from. And that means that I'm a child of God and I have all the, all the tools to create whatever habits I want, good or bad. Just like I created the bad ones, I can easily create the good ones exactly the same because they are based on the same formula, repetition. Yeah. So if you're going to yeah. repeat drinking or taking drugs or eating carbs, you're going to get a habit of that and you're going to be addicted. If you're going to repeat not taking drugs and not drinking and not, you know, overeating, then you're going to create a, that, a habit of that. It's, it's a repetition. It works both ways, good and bad habits. And I'm not saying that it was easy because it wasn't. Um, and it's okay to fall and what we call fail, which is not really a failure. It's just a proof that you're trying. Um, then you just get up and keep going. You fall again, you get up, you keep going. You're like almost like a robot. You have to get up and keep going. And because one of the things that um, many people don't know, and I didn't know, it's when I learned, yes, I mentioned learning of who you are and where you come from. And the second one is what I was going to talk about now is learning the actual physiology of the habit, how it happens in the brain, 
more of the, like the scientific part of it. And it's um, just like we create a habit of uh, playing piano, driving the car. Uh, it, it's exactly the same how we create a habit of getting out of a habit by repeating, not doing it, yeah. by distracting yourself from it. And when you learn how to play piano, can you play piano very well right away? No, you're going to stumble. Same with this. If you want to get rid of that bad habit, get rid of a foot addiction, are you going to overnight not eat anymore? No, you are going to eat once in a while. So you are going to, to stumble and fall. It's normal. It's a normal process. What's important, because people get hung up into that, oh, I, I fell off the wagon again. That's not important. What's important is to get up and keep going. That's what's important. Because falling off the wagon, it's normal. What happens in the brain when we create a habit, let's say you want to stop eating, overeating, you have, um, okay, let me take a different, uh, driving the car, because everybody drives a car. When we start driving the car, what has to actually happen in the brain, we have to create neural pathways in the brain that are in charge of driving the car. In the beginning, we don't know how to drive the car because we don't have those neural pathways. They're literally physical little threads in the brain, connections, synapses in the brain. We don't have them. So how can we do something if we don't have them? You can't. So the more you practice, the more these neural pathways get stronger and stronger and stronger until we drive the car without even knowing we're driving or thinking of other things. We don't have to think about it. It's literally these neural pathways that act on our behalf. And that's a positive one. Same with a negative habit, exactly the same. So. When you want to overcome a negative habit, you want to overcome it by distracting yourself from it and creating a positive habit that counteracts it. And you have to give it time. It's exactly the same, the same formula. You have to give it time. Keep distracting, keep focusing. Attention, God, remember, God, God. Send God over there. God will do it for you. Just, just send him over there all the time, all the time. And have patience because... We are creatures of habits. We are complete creatures of habits. Yeah, and all this is in your book, um, Habits um, Rule You. Rule you. Yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting one. I, I read it and I recommend everyone to to buy it and read it. Yeah, I put the first half of it. I, I talked only about the habit in a way that it can be applied in any area. Uh, the second half, I focused on nutrition and fitness because it's something that... Uh, I was, uh, I worked in, in a fitness facility for 11 years. Actually, my husband and I, we owned a fitness facility and uh, we gathered so much knowledge. And when we got out of that, uh, people were asking me, why don't you just put everything you know in a book? Hmm. And uh, that's why the second part of the book is focused on nutrition and fitness. And, um, but the, the, um, the first half is my favorite because it talks about, you know, he, he, we can't really create um, habits to the point where we can say that they drive us unless we really, really understand where we're coming from and who we are. When we know that, we know our worth. And when we know our worth, we will put the time to create good habits. I'm worth it. I'm going to, to do this yes. for me. The self-esteem yeah. part. Yes. Yes. It's important. Yeah. At the beginning of the interview, you mentioned A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. When did you start that and how it did it influence your life? Uh, well, A Course in Miracles, uh, it's, um, it's very interesting. Uh, I, a friend of mine recommended it to me over 20 years ago. I bought it and I instantaneously resonated with it. I don't know how because obviously English is not my first language and it's written in a very specific way. It doesn't resonate with everybody. Like my husband, he loves it. He reads it once in a while, but me, I'm addicted to it. I love it. It's my Bible for 20 years um, because of the way it kind of talks almost sometimes like Yoda, like the words are a little bit. So I resonated with it 100%. Um, when, the first time I saw its effects, because see, of course, the miracles, 
And this is something I actually just realized a few days ago. A Course in Miracles is a course of creating habits. It doesn't say that, but it, that's what it is. It's 365 days. You do one lesson a day, and within a year, you create this amazing habit of, of thinking that way that you can literally create miracles. That's the idea of A Course in Miracles, right? So my first um, experience with it was uh, it helped me overcome panic attacks as I suffered with <clears throat> tremendous fears since I was a child and, um, and because of things that I went through in, in my childhood and young adult years. And by the time I reached my early 30s, I was suffering with full-blown panic attacks that sometimes would last two, three days at a time. And um, that's when I took the book seriously and I started doing A Course in Miracles and it got me out of that. Uh, that and then learning about the scientific part that uh, even habit, even anxiety is a habit. So anxiety exists in the brain as a neural pathway or neural pathways that are created over a period of time and um, it becomes automatic. And uh, it's, uh, it's called the Linden method, what I was, that where I learned the scientific part of it. So that was my first experience with the Course in Miracles and, um, and it's, it's, um, it's amazing. I recommend it. Yeah, I mean, the lessons are very short. It's just one sentence, which uh, you have to, and then read the description and the advice of how to, to apply the lesson. Yes. Um, shouldn't take more than five minutes a day to um, do it two or three times. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, I'm at lesson 18 today. So. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Wow, it's the first time? First time, yes. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I receive it as a gift and uh, I have to honor the, the gift. I, I talked to uh, someone who is very involved in uh, the A Course of Miracles. Uh, I think it was one of my first interviews with someone from Team Noe from uh, Las Vegas. He's part of the humanities team. Mm -hmm. And they meet every Sunday to discuss about a specific lesson. And uh, my mind stuck to that, <clears throat> um, to what he explained to me about the Course in, in Miracles during the interview. And then everything happened, you know, um, in due time with my friend who yes. gave me the, mm -hmm. the gift and uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's 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 yeah. uh, again it's my bible i cannot praise it enough i still um because once in a while like i did the full course years ago when i was suffering with anxiety and then every day i just read i just open it and whatever god wants me to open it i read it and that's my lesson for today for the day um but about three months ago i thought i felt like i needed to go through the course so i opened it to see where would god want me to restart it and i think it was less than 90 something so i i restarted it from there or 60 something anyways i'm at less than 140 something today um it still makes me cry like it still makes me cry. I read the lessons and it's like, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's yeah. every word in that book is, is gold. Beautiful. Yes. Um, your latest book, uh, Love is Light, Transmute Fear into Love, uh, is just unbelievable. And you had the, uh, the persistence and the guts, if I can say, to uh, illustrate the book yourself and even... Uh, voice the the book uh, as an audio book mm -hmm. um, how was that process for you um, <laughs> well I the story came to me uh, almost four years ago 2017 early 2017 in the spring and in the beginning um, I thought yeah I'm just going to hire an illustrator obviously I'm not an artist I don't draw. I used to paint a little bit years and years ago, but I don't, illustration is a completely different animal. Not even artists, most artists don't get into illustrations because it's difficult. Um, so for the first couple of years, I was looking for an illustrator and it just didn't work out for some reason. Then uh, last year I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. I I'm going to learn how to do it and I'm going to do it. 
but it took me a year. I was afraid to, to start it. I was so terrified of starting it because how do you do that when you never did it before? And it's not only that, but the, the subject of the story is so dear to me. It's so, to me, to me is the ultimate thing, learning how to transmute fear into love. And I lived that in real life, how I grew up with all the fears and I grew up with a terrible fear of the devil from the church and from my parents who believed in black magic. And my dad used to always tell us stories about how my grandmother, his mom was killed with black magic. So I grew up with anxiety, anxiety about the devil and all these bad things. Um, so my, my panic attacks were because I was afraid of the devil, basically. I know it sounds crazy and stupid, but that is the world I lived in and that's the impact it had on me. And I was here, I was a 30 something year old woman with a baby and I was shaking, paralyzed in fear because of this invisible creature that nobody ever saw. And um, then over years and years of messages, I started getting dreams and um, I worked on the, with A Course in Miracles and my beliefs turned 180 to the point where one day in the car, four years ago, the, this insane idea just came to me. What if instead of fearing the devil, we have compassion for it? And that's because I, I'm afraid to say love because people will misunderstand that, but it's love. How about we just understand it for what it actually is? Because it's not what we think it is. It's just something given to us by God as a platform to, so we can use our free will because we wouldn't be able to use our free will unless we had the opposites to choose from. If everything was fine and daddy, dandy, what would you choose from? You would have no choice because everything would be good, right? Yes. That's why he's here. That's why he was given to us. And that's why to the message that I got, because this was a big, big message that I got of this story. The message was, I gave him to you. God said, I gave him to you to, for you to learn what love is and understand how to choose it and, and cherish it. So, yeah, I, I, uh, four years ago, I got this idea, what if we have compassion? And then I went through six, seven weeks of, of uh, what I would call a divine intervention when I, where I literally felt my heart was being worked on. I felt the strong pain um, that, most people probably would have gone to the emergency with thinking they had a heart attack, but it wasn't. I could tell, I could feel inside it wasn't. But for like six, seven weeks, I was as if I was drinking espresso constantly. That's how like wired I was. And uh, at the end of it, I just said, just tell me what you want me to do. I was so mad one day. I, I went on the street for a walk. It was raining. I didn't even care. I just went in the rain and I said, what the F you want me to do? Tell me why you, like I felt tormented. And that's when I heard, you know, bring him home. Uh, and the story came to me for people to understand why he's here. Stop blaming this creature for your misdeeds. You are doing the things, not nobody can make you do it. That's why you idiots, I gave you free will. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and uh, so you were asking, sorry, asking me about it. So th the reason I said all this is because illustrations to me, they had to portray all that. All Everything that I told you just now is like, how do I put it in illustrations? And how does anybody... I don't even know if I did a good job, but at least I know I did it and I have nobody else to blame. <laughs> mm. um, but yes, yeah, so a year I procrastinated. I wouldn't start. I was so afraid. And then this year uh, with uh, COVID and everything, being at home, uh, no work basically, because we can't go anywhere sing. Mm. So I said, I have to start. So what do I do? My brain just goes like this. Okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then I'm like, okay, what if I take pictures of my family in the positions that I want the characters to be in, put it in Photoshop, and then trace them? Hmm. And that's what I did. And my husband posted for me with winter gloves for the king and 
my daughter posed for me in different positions for, for all the lady characters. And yeah, then um, the king, I inspired myself from Stefan Celmare, mm -hmm. Stephen the Great, because he's my one of my favorite uh, Romanian voivodes. He built 47 monasteries in Romania, one for each year that he reigned. And, um, and uh, with Babau, who is basically the devil, uh, it was easy because I had a dream about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came in a dream and uh, tried to kill me, basically. <laughs> and he was throwing these um, electric blue light balls at me. And I was floating. And he couldn't catch me. And in my mind, I was thinking, he can't catch me, but I'm still a bit afraid. So I think I still have to do a bit more Course in Miracles and believe in God more. I was thinking in my dream. And that's how his image came with, with the electric blue light. And um, yeah, and he came out. So I, I'm, I really, I feel like after doing this book, I feel like I can do anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, uh, reading about uh, the story of the Indian motorcycle, which you cover in 200,000 Varoski crystals, I think that's even more powerful story than, uh, than this one, because uh, that takes a lot of patience and a lot of endurance. And as you said, 1,500 hours of uh, painful uh, work. Initially, maybe the first 500 were painful, and the next 1,000 were more joyful. And... Yeah. Uh, I really want to, to draw a little bit out of you about that story. <clears throat> what was the, the shifting point when work became not necessarily pleasure, but had a different mind, you had a different mindset to finish the job and have that uh, motorcycle sold? Actually, I look at your background and the background looks very much like it, like the, the black with the dots. It's like it's black sparkly because the motorcycle was black. <laughs> Um, this is the ide idealist part of me. Um, obviously, you tell anybody I'm going to buy a lease, lease a $26,000 motorcycle, Indian motorcycle, and I'm going to, you know, destroy all its beautiful, beautiful paint job and sand it down and then try to do something that I've never done before, put crystals on it. it that sounds crazy. But... Uh, yeah, we, we, and again, my husband is just as guilty as I am because he said, okay, let's go for it. And um, I, it, it was, th that process that took nine months uh, actually is what caused my, mm, mm, me to understand about will, that it wasn't mine. Will is not ours. It, we just have a piece. We can tap into it anytime we want, but it's not coming from us. It's God. Uh, because when I first started it, I, I thought, you know, I can do this motorcycle. Three, four weeks, I'm done. And after I sanded it and I, I um, glued about, I would say, two, uh, two square inches of crystals and it took me five hours, I'm like, what have I done? This is going to take me much longer than three, four weeks. What am I going to do? And I was like destroyed almost. I'm like, I felt like I was looking at it and I was shocked. I'm like, what am I going to do now? I'm not going to waste a year on this motorcycle. You know, I'm thinking. But at the same time, I had to. It was all sanded down. It looked like really bad after taking down all that beautiful shine and everything. So I had to, to move forward. And I actually talk about it in my book, Habits Rule You. I say, this motorcycle literally broke me down and built me back up, literally. I came out of it so much stronger because it taught me patience and it taught me something that can be applied in every single habit, good positive habit that we wanna create. With every single crystal that I put, I was ahead. I was ahead. Look, I'm putting another one. I'm ahead. I'm ahead. I'm ahead. Not behind. I'm moving ahead. That's all. That's what that motorcycle taught me to focus that I am moving ahead. And it's all up to me. 
if I stop and destroy everything. And then it's just something clicked. And that's when I felt like this will, like it didn't matter anymore how long it was going to take. It just, and it came out so beautiful. I cried when I had to let it go. It, uh, but at least someone who really appreciates both motorcycles and Shurovsky crystals got it. So, Yes. And this is a, uh, exercise in will, which we don't recommend to everyone to do because it's very costly. So they really it's have costly. to. And it's not, I didn't do it um, cold turkey uh, before this. I, cause I, I love doing businesses and I love uh, ever since I was a little girl in Romania, I love sewing beads, sequins, putting, you know, bedazzling my shoes and things from, for stage my clothes. So what I did, I created before I did the motorcycle, I had a business where I was making um, like a part-time business where I was doing uh, cake toppers. So I was getting these uh, aluminum monograms, beautiful monograms, custom. I, I would take them to a factory and have them, um, I forget the name of it now, where they, they dip them in paint and it's going to stay there forever. Uh, I forget the name of it, what the process is. And then I would take it and put crystals on them of different colors, whatever the customers wanted. So, and because I was working with Shirovsky crystals, I wanted to put the label that Shirovsky company has, which is made with Shirovsky crystals, but they wouldn't let you do that unless they approve your product. So I had to send in my product over. They had to put it under a microscope to see that my glue didn't destroy the crystals, that the crystals mm -hmm. are done properly. So they approved me as a Shirovsky branding partner. So now they shipped me their labels and I could put the, the official label made with Shirovsky crystals. So it was, a process like a few years before I wouldn't have done the motorcycle if I wasn't completely um, confident in the yeah. quality, the quality. Yeah. What I didn't know about was the duration that was going to take, but the, the, the quality of, of the craftsmanship I was confident in. Yeah. Yeah. So nowadays, can you say with confidence that love is what um, leads your life? 100%, 100%. And love is what leads everybody's life. And unless we do that, we'll always be straight from the real path. So it doesn't matter how corny it sounds to some, buddy, you're gonna get to it sooner or later. You're gonna approve of it because <laughs> we have no choice and, in a good way. And are your all decisions coming from the heart? My decisions? Yes. Um, I'm trying as much as possible. Obviously, I'm not perfect and I'm not an angel here, but I, at least I'm trying. Yes. Yeah. I'm, my problem was always not having enough patience. And when you don't have enough patience, you don't make decisions from, from your heart. So I had to learn to have patience and take a step back and listen. And... Um, go with, with what feels good. Because if, feels, if it doesn't feel good, it means that something is wrong. Because our feelings are our, our internal guidance system. It's, it's a built-in guidance system that we, I believe we should take care of it and pay attention to it. So yeah, if it feels good, move on in love. And that's, you can never go wrong with that. Yeah. Angelica, we are approaching the end of our interview. Any final thoughts, please? Well, first, I just want to uh, congratulate you on this beautiful podcast. And okay. I just want to say that uh, your, your writings and your work is, is amazing. And I'm really, really proud that you're Romanian as well. And that we found each other here in Canada. And uh, basically, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you for your work and for what you do you're definitely sending out good vibrations that help more people than you you think and Thank you that's what i would like to say <clears throat> and i wish you uh happy holidays and uh wonderful 2021 thank you um, you too your books will uh, the links to your books will um, be published in the description of uh, the video mm -hmm. Uh, and for um, my viewers, thank you for, for watching, share it, like it, 
And uh, don't forget to uh, go to my uh, Patreon uh, account uh, and uh, support me at patreon.com slash Claudio Murgan. And until next time, love and gratitude. <laughs>